What's going on Neon Nation? Welcome back to the Neon Arcade for some more Cyberpunk 2077 news. In today's episode, we have a new gang poster hinting at one known and one unknown gang in Cyberpunk 2077 and their potential story implications, some miscommunication about an alleged hands-on preview of Cyberpunk 2077, Mike Pondsmith revealing details on the 2077 timeline in the form of a character from the lore, if Wake Up Samurai will actually be tied into the game itself and more. First off, we have some corrections issued by GameRanks when it comes to hands-on previews of Cyberpunk. In a recent Top Games of 2020 video, a member of the GameRanks team mentioned that Jake Baldino had played Cyberpunk 2077 and also mentioned that he had positive impressions about it. This caused some buzz online and some speculation as to if the hands-on previews of Cyberpunk were around the corner after late last year, President and CEO of CD Projekt Adam Kaczynski mentioned a strong dose of information about the game in the form of hands-on previews would be shared in early 2020. Evidently, this was an error in the video and Baldino has taken a Twitter to rectify this, so it seems like the wait will continue for hands-on previews of Cyberpunk, where we'll finally learn how the game actually feels in the hands of game journalists and media outlets. Next up, we have some big hints about the game in the form of Night City Gang poster art. If you guys are familiar with Michael Dezekian, he has done many of the gang posters that are featured on the CD Projekt Red store, which are by the way 20% off right now. The Maelstrom and the Valentinos have been featured on these posters so far, but it seems like he's currently working on a Tiger Claws poster at the moment judging by his Instagram. The Tiger's Claw are a gang in 2020 and 2077 and have allegedly turned from a defensive combat booster gang to a gang who uses its fair share of cyberware, bikes and katanas, and do have strong ties to Arasaka. Obviously the tiger is their logo which can be seen in the bottom half with a gang member riding a Yaiba Kusanagi. On the top however we have a dragon. Keen-eyed Instagram user Dekosu asked Dezekian if this could be the Steel Dragons gang, to which Dezekian responds with quote, I don't know winky face. Now the Steel Dragons are Yorinobu Arasaka's gang consisting of Tokyo Nomads, who in the lore of cyberpunk oppose Arasaka for their vile corporate operations. Yorinobu hates Arasaka after being born into the family and uncovering their truths. The poster shows what could be two gangs clashing over territory, which would really make sense lore-wise. It's a strong point of speculation that we will see Yorinobu and the Tokyo Nomads, aka the Steel Dragons in the game. Now in the same vein, Mike Pondsmith has taken a reddit, as he seems to do from time to time, to reveal more about Cyberpunk 2020, Red, and 2077. In a post he lays out an RP scenario he used to run called Michiko's Night Out, which involved the granddaughter of Sabura Arasaka leaving the compound on her 18th birthday in the company of her personal bodyguard Solo Kenichi Zaburo. While out bar hopping, she runs into cyborg Solo Adam Smasher, leading to some explosive results. As he continues, he likens Michiko to a cross between Battle Angel Alita and a Mad Girl Genius and also mentions that we will meet an older Michiko in the full Cyberpunk Red release and that she might show up in 2077 since she continues to exist in that timeline. It seems like we could be adding another lore-based character to the 2077 roster. Moving on, we have some really awesome rewards for CD Projekt Red employees who have hit their 5th, 10th, 15th, 20th, and 25th anniversaries with the company. These are some amazing presents that we first saw with Mateusz Thomas Kaiwicz back in 2018 when he received a samurai jacket, similarly to one seen here. We also have what looks like Silverhand's guitar, the Deleuze Orphean, possibly signed by Keanu Reeves, with Johnny Silverhand's initials in the quotes underneath. These are all pretty insane gifts and I'm sure all the recipients will be thrilled with each of them. Next up we have details about the second most infamous Keanu slash Silverhand quote so far. Wake Up Samurai has become a favorite line of those who've been following Cyberpunk 2077, but it seems like this dialogue between the player and Johnny might be confined to just the CGI trailer. Via CDPR's community manager Lalea, we learn that this line is a phrase from the CGI trailer, not from the game, so you probably won't hear him mention these exact words. I'm not gonna lie, I was looking forward to this moment being in the game, but I'm sure there will be plenty more iconic moments from our buddy Keanu. Now we've talked a lot about the world of Cyberpunk 2077 lore book in the past, as well as the recently announced deluxe edition, but we've had some poor images so far to work with. We mentioned that yes, there are temporary tattoos featured in the deluxe edition that show us the main gangs, some of which we didn't know about before in the Mox and 6th Street, 
but now we have a clearer image featuring the animals, the voodoo boys, the Valentinos, Sixth Street, the Maelstrom, the Mox, Tiger's Claw, and presumably one more hiding behind the first page. This could be the rates mentioned on the back of the book, a sub-faction of the violent rogue nomad nation, the Raff and Shiv. We also have a clearer image of the new vehicles and two more car manufacturers in Night City. We knew about Quadra and Thornton in our prior inspections, but now we have Archer which represents the entropism visual style, and Rayfield which represents the upper echelon, neo-kitsch visual style. It also shows how the sleeve opens up and features a barcode. This might be a very very long shot, but who knows, something ARG related might come from this, despite prior knowledge from expert ARG busters game detectives that in alternate reality games, barcodes are usually smoke and mirror tactics to distract the player. Next we have some details about the future conferences from CDPR. Last episode we mentioned the Taipei Game Show as a potential conference where new presentations would be held. It does seem like they've come out and say that they are showing old gameplay for the Asian market. Additionally, CDPR has no plans to go to PAX South. Travel does seem to be less of a priority in the final 3 months here, which makes sense logistically, so expect any new content in the future to be digital drops for everyone to see. Next we have the official Capture Cyberpunk photo contest voting opening up, so check out the link in the description to vote for your favorite images. This is a contest where you capture just how cyberpunk your city is, with some great prizes for those who snap pictures that exemplify this. Moving on, we have this insane recreation of the Cyberpunk 2077 demo in the graphical style of the PlayStation 1. Aptly named Cyberpunk 1997, creator Barely Regal took it upon himself to recreate segments of the 48 minute 2018 gameplay reveal in the blocky age style of PlayStation 1 games using Dreams. As someone whose first console was a PS1 and who routinely played the first top down GTA with the designated fart and burp buttons, this struck me right in the nostalgia feels. Really awesome work and to check out the video in its entirety, check out the link in the description. Thank you guys for watching and for more cyberpunk, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.